Grab your wicker baskets, war gamers, because today we are doing a bit of a potpourri. I wanted to show you my latest storage solution for my imagination wars of not quite Napoleonics. And a bit of an unboxing, a shipment I got from Irregular Miniatures, those wacky, wacky Brits with the fantastic customer service. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the fun project is already underway. This is a fairly simple 5 by. well, wait a second, I have a ruler here, why don't I just show you? It's actually going to be about 10 inches across by 7 inches high. 7, look, it's a little too, too look, there we go, 7, it's, you're going to have to take my word for it. It's 7 inches across. Oh, I can do this because I'm a smart boy. 6 by 10. And inside, you've got three full armies for Rod Humble's 2x2 Napoleonics. So far, I have painted... Oh, it even comes with... You can bedazzle your armies. I haven't decided what wonderful jewel phrase to put on there. Maybe something like 2mm Gamers Rise Up. Look at this, guys. This is... Is my Austrians full army? It's about 40 stands of infantry, cavalry, artillery, everything you need. Pop the next one, and we've got. If you haven't have, even have a roster here showing, well, you can see I had to kind of play around to make it work. Probably need to redo that one. Here's my Russians, and of course, not quite done yet. Still need to get the labels on these guys, but I also have my Brits. So if you watched the last video, you saw the not-quite-Russians go up against the not-quite-Austrians, and here you can see exactly how distinct those three armies are from each other. They all have separate rosters, they all have their own flavor, and they are all a lot of fun to play. But this is only half of what I'm dealing with. I have another, and these came with... The first three that I got. I still have three more levels to this storage solution to fill. I still got to do my Prussians and my French. When I'm done, you'll be able to see what those look like. So that's that. Two millimeters of fantastic gaming in a tiny little box. Put in an order. Moving on. I put in an order with Irregular Miniatures, and fortunately for both me and the company, uh, they left a little something out of the package, so I emailed them and said, hey, I, I didn't get the thing, and I got an email back that same day saying, whoop, we'll make it right. I said, well, hold on now. I got to make another order. Just throw it into my next order, because I needed a little more terrain for these 2 millimeter Wonders. In the meantime, I figured I might as well go ahead and take a chance on some other figures. And I really want to show you these. But first, let's talk about the samples. See, Ian knows that I play the War and the Vendee in 15 millimeters. So he didn't send me something useless for the sample pack. He didn't send me, boy, what, what would be useless? Samurai which I wouldn't have, which are great. You know, samurai are great, and it would be fun to see what that looks like. But instead, and I know it's not painted, but check this out. He sent me from his peasant line, a mounted peasant, so now I can have a lord of the Vendee, and then he sent me the good wife, good body. There we go. See that? So now I have a female peasant, who gives the boys something worth fighting over, or maybe she's got a bit of a cudgel of her own. Maybe she'll get into the mix in my next War in the Vendee video. I also took a flyer. Now, they don't have a whole lot of picture evidence on their website. They run kind of old school. And as you know, there is no school like the old school. When it comes to old school, if you like it, you're in the right place. Look at this feller. This is one of his space pirates. He's got a little backpack, and I know you can't see a whole lot in, of detail in there, but once I'm able to get my brush on it, 
boy howdy are you going to see a lot of detail. Once I get my brush on it, once I get my focus on it, once this is cell phones making our lives a lot easier, people. There we go. And of course, all the best science fiction figures combine firearms with bladed instruments. That's the way we roll. Space opera or GTFO. There's a couple of others, but I'm not going to bore you to tears with all of them. Uh, suffice it to say that I now have a wonderful little full crew of hideous little space pirates. Well, but I got to show you this one. Because most of them are just kind of grotty looking space dudes. But look at this guy. He, he, can you see the detail in there? It's a lot of glare, but he's even got a parrot. He's got a parrot. If you've watched these videos, you know I'm a parrot kind of guy. So there's a little junior biscotti there for you. Little beard, little patch. That's the kind of space pirate I want to see. That's the kind of character that uh, you don't find a whole lot of. So that's 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 good. We, we, we get some others. See, take a look. Oh, I do have a... I don't know if you can see. There, there, there's a priest right there. He's, he's ready to fight the vampires. He'll be appearing in the Vendée, of course, as you've seen in the previous battles. If there's one thing those blues hate when it comes to to uh to liberty it's fraternity if there's one thing they hate when it comes to liberty it's people actually being free to pursue their own interests not that i'm bitter moving on this is two sets of rules that there is no information anywhere online about these rules and uh, i'm not going to go through them in any great detail today suffice it to say they're very cheap. And I mean that in only the most flattering of tones. This is Ian McKay's One Page Napoleonics. Look at that. One page, and it includes art. How cool is that? I love this rule set. It's got it, everything. Well, hmm, how do I put this? I was going to say it has everything you need, but it really doesn't. It's called Fast Play Napoleonics. And it doesn't have everything you need, but it tells you everything you need. This is not a rule set that holds your hand. It assumes that you know what the heck you're doing. If you don't know how to take this from a page and a half to the table, maybe you need to go off and get a couple of more years of experience miniature wargaming under your belt. Specifically, I wanted to key in on one particular thing about this rule set that at first I thought, huh, that's a little weird. He's really going to make me do that? But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, oh, this is fantastic. There are two aspects of these rules I want to draw your attention to. The first is that it is a simple photocopy of basic typeset rules. I like that old school charm. This is a selling point, in my opinion. It gets better. There's a rata written in in pen. And I, let me take a closer look at this. Yeah, you know, I, I don't even think this is a photocopy. I think that this is... Ian took the time to grab a pe ballpoint pen and write out. When pushed back, take a test, as in Section 6, which I'm not going to show you. There's a little asterisk. Love it. Love it. The attention to detail. Personalized rule set. How fantastic is that? Moving back to what I was talking about earlier, check this out. If you're not playing a refight, the points values can be arrived at. Wait, so if you want to do point values for this rule set... The cost for a battery is a third of the gun's poundage. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what? A, bet, a third of the gun? You mean it's not just light or heavy? You mean I have to do research and find out how how heavy these guns were? How much the, the guns weighed? Now, I'm, I'm kind of joking. I know that the poundage is the poundage of the cannonball that was fired by the gun. But you get my point. He gave me just enough information to make me want to go out and do more research and make myself 
even even more smarter than I already am, which is amazing. It he is not treating me like an idiot. That's a rarity these days in the world of wargaming. A lot of rule sets just want to hold your hand and streamline and streamline and take out all flavor. I'm looking at you, black powder, and make it as generic and bland as possible. You have to make your own table if you're going to play Fast Play Napoleonics. It's actually designed for figures like these, but like I said, these figures are for the Wars of Marlboro. Fortunately for me, I also picked up for just a couple of bucks Marlboro Country, which, oddly enough, I thought this was a play on the cigarette campaign, the Marlboro Man. When I went to look up information on this rule set online, I found a whole bunch of commentary on Marlboro Country somewhere down in Kangaroo Land. But I didn't find anything on this rule set. I've given it a brief read-through. We're going to do a full review, probably even a full gameplay. The battle packs that I purchased for my 2mm figures are actually designed around this rule set. And then I had to go and muck everything up by, instead of using these as a maneuver element, one strip at a time, I actually put them on a base. So my bases are not actually appropriate for this rule set. You want to know how much I care? I care this much right there. See, two millimeters is how much I care. I'm going to use them anyway. This rule set seems to have formations. I think I need to use more than a couple of guys. I'm not sure about the details. I need to read rule sets three times before I actually play them and still get enough wrong for my commenters to stay busy. Fairly old school, out of the gate. Charts are your friend. They present maximum information, maximum readability. We like charts. We like modifier lists. It takes a little while to scan through, but after a couple of games, you internalize them. They're great. We like, again, I'm going to zoom in if my, if my, uh, oh, my camera was a good boy this time. This almost looks like it was printed on a dot matrix printer. This is not the best typesetting. It's not... Well, hang on. This here is a fine game. Tomorrow's War by Osprey Publishing and Ambush Alley Games. This one was written by... Does it have an actual... Oh, it doesn't say... I used to know this. I'm not sure who wrote. John Tuffley. Wait a minute. No, the introduction is by John Tuffley. That's the Ground Zero Games guy. Anyway, the point is, this is a gorgeous rule set. Look at that fantastic cover art. Look at this wonderful type... Oh, just gotta put, look, at, look at these graphics and typesetting and, and lots of lines behind the text. For, you know, to, to give you the added challenge of trying to read with poor eyesight... Pictures of miniatures. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And if you like Tomorrow's War, if you like Ambush Alley games, please, this is not a personal attack. Understand that when I say that playing this game feels like you're missing something, it's because as well-designed and play-tested and as gorgeous as this book is, the half-dozen games I played, I could not escape the feeling that I was doing something wrong. This game feels wrong, and even though I'm fairly confident I was doing everything right, it was not an enjoyable experience. Reading the book was the most fun aspect of this game. It's got some great scenarios in it, and someday, maybe, I'll even do a proper review of this game, but, but not this day, because at the end of the day, I found it very frustrating, and I like to keep the channel as positive as possible. The point is, this is a gorgeous, expensive book that is frustrating. I can get just as much fun out of a $2 set of photocopied rules. And I just wanted to remind you, war gamers, that looks ain't 
everything. It's what's under the hood that counts. And this Marlboro country has a very interesting and unusual turn sequence that I'm eager to try, and I'm going to get to it as soon as possible. But I got a lot of things to get to as soon as possible. So that's kind of my hobby haul for recently is to tease you with a couple of, of old school rule sets. I think this one's probably been played for 25 years. Ooh, I'm looking forward to playing that one too. I wanted to show you that with a little investment, you can have big fun. You can be flexible. I can use these figures from Marlboro and Napoleonics, but probably not tomorrow's war. Got some fun miniatures to paint. So good stuff coming up. Kind of a brief rule and a little bit of a... A little bit of a... Would you call that a rant? Would you call it a pick-me-up? Would you call it a rallying cry for old-school war gamers to keep making your table your own? That's probably what it is. At the end of the day, it's a little bit of everything. It's a li And this is a great video for those of you who, like your humble host... Have a touch of gamer ADD. Has a hard time focusing on. You need to. Go, you need to go away now. You're making me want to play you, and I have other things to get to first. For those of you who like your humble host are easily distracted by, by, by things like new rulers, and space pirates, and oh, what's this? And did you see the shiny letters that I got here? And did you see, oh, you know what? It's time for me to go pray. I'm going to be praying for you.